and my very dear colleague and friend. Uh, thank you all for inviting me to speak at the first plenary of this conference. Standing here today, I'm wearing my hat as an educator, and although I treasure being a trustee of Mercy Malaysia. As an educationalist, I work with young people with a view of nurturing them into great beings in time to come. As such, my presentation will not only touch on humanitarian work alone, but also on how we at the Sunway Education Group, through education, nurture our future generation to do their best to contribute in their own little way to advancing humanitarianism and preserving humanity. Ladies and gentlemen, on Thursday, July 25th, 2019, the week after I left Cambridge, the temperature at the university's botanic garden was the highest ever recorded in UK at 38.7 degrees centigrade. Now, a lot of us have been to London. We always feel that the weather is very dreary, but 38.7 degrees Celsius is totally unheard of. And this is part of an increasingly frequent number of extreme weather events that have, that have hit UK and the European continent, driven by man-made climate change, just this summer alone. Heat waves are one of the deadliest natural hazards facing humanity, and the threat they pose will only become more serious and more widespread as the climate crisis continues. I quote Francesco Rocca, the president of the Inter International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies. <coughs> I was in Europe at the tail end of the first summer heat wave. As, sorry, as high pressure and winds from the Sahara Desert affected large parts of the continent, resulting in record-breaking temperatures for the month of June at many locations. And a national all-time high temperature of 45.9 degrees centigrade on 28th of June was recorded in France. And during that time, the heat caused 15 deaths. It is indeed the contrast of climate condition and its unpredictability within close geographical proximity, which already indicates how we may have bro broken through nature's resiliency. Scientists have said Europe's 2019 heat wave, like last year's, is closely linked to the climate emergency and that extreme weather events will many times more likely happen over the coming decades. And this I quote from The Guardian. In, from the Guardian. Somewhat closer to home, Dozens of people have been killed as monsoon floods ripped through Nepal, Bangladesh, and northeastern India, and most recently in Myanmar and Mumbai, causing thousands of people to lose their lives, homes, and farms. Yet parts of India at the same time experience drought, which further emphasizes on the climate disparity. In fact, climate Crisis disasters are happening at the rate of one a week. And though most draw little international in attention, the UN has warned work is urgently needed to prepare developing countries for the profound impacts. Mami Mizutori, the UN Secretary General Special Representative on Disaster Risk Reduction said, we talk about a climate emergency and a climate crisis, but if we cannot confront this issue adapting to the effects, we will not survive. This is not about the future, it is about today. But how do we confront all these world disaster issues? 
Talking alone at the UN is not enough, especially when certain domineering world leaders declare that they don't believe in climate change. To a whole nation of beguiled citizens, we clearly need to educate for change. Next. The education group has established a platform for engaging human beings in knowledge and learning which covers primary to higher level. We reward merit and award opportunities through scholarship, advance, advancing the knowledge through enterprise and research. It is our primary involvement in advancing the humanitarian sector through education, and we do believe that education is the key solution towards the problems humanity faces. Sunway Group's core values permeates throughout the group, including the education group. We have built a foundation based on integrity, humility, and excellence, where integrity is core. We are to act professionally, ethically, and honorably to ensure our actions are consistent with our words. It's not just about doing the right thing, but doing things right at all times and earning trust and to maintain that trust. Humility is fundamental to our organization. Never be too proud to learn from others. And so we seek first to understand and then to be understood. Thirdly, we must strive for excellence in order to deliver high quality education and experiences to our students and other stakeholders. Across our enterprise, we strive for high standards and to continuously innovate and improve the way we do things. Besides our three core values, I wish to offer four more values so that we may truly be the richest person in the world in order to safeguard humanity. Let us have resiliency by being strong and unmoved, having a character and a mindset which learns from life. We cultivate resiliency in our approach and transform that to an attitude. Resilient people are like trees bending in the wind they bounce back. Stephen Southwick, MD. Add compassion and the courage to liberate ourselves from doubts and question marks and move forward with a brave heart and hope. We take a leap of faith ourselves in humanity. And we have been practicing to care as part of our culture, whether it be through scholarship, breakthrough research, providing quality education, or simply being there when needed. We have a community at Sunway which is very involved in giving, and that's what we believe being courageous should be, bold, selfless, and caring. All that talk about climate change at the beginning, we must believe in S, sustainability. To keep in mind that how our actions today will reflect on and affect tomorrow and not take the future for granted. We make an investment each day towards achieving a sustainable future. Last but not least, my favorite is talent. Our whole raison d'etre at Sunway Education Group is to nurture and develop talent, that God-given gift to each one of us to hone and to use it in this life. We need to have all seven values to come together to guide our actions. I thought you might like this quote that I've placed up there. And yet, while the quote is true that without compassion, courage has no direction, it is also essential to have integrity laid as the foundation in all our values. Because one could have compassion and courage, but if we lack integrity, then our other values become questionable. I believe mercy will know this more than anyone else. As you collect vast amounts of donation and do wonderful works, but should you cause any concern with your disbursement of funds, it could jeopardize even and even negate all your important humanitarian work and sacrifice. 
I talked about sustainability as a value, even though it may not naturally be seen as one. It really refers to the UN, UN's efforts to save our world via the 17 SDGs. To that end, we formed a partnership with Jeffrey Sachs based on the steadfast commitment to achieving the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs, aiming to develop expertise needed to move Malaysia and Southeast Asia forward on a path of sustainable development. Now, this partnership led to the establishment of what we now call the Jeffrey Sachs Center on Sustainable Development at the University and at the Southeast Asian base for the United Nations of the Sustainable Development Solutions Network, this center is a hub of research and policy practice besides delivering programs to train students, practitioners, and policy leaders on sustainable initiatives. And of course, we do all this while collaborating with industry agencies, government bodies, and universities worldwide. We are committed towards the 17 goals and we will do our best to ensure that our activities and initiatives are actually anchored by these 17 SDGs. <coughs> sustainability is our society's <coughs> ability to support the quality of life indefinitely, be it environmental sustainability, economic sus sustainability or social sustainability. We can't live a good life if others are not. Quite simply, we wouldn't drape ourselves with jewels and gems while other people are starving around us. We will be so worried about being robbed. So the, the idea is that we have to we have both obligation and need to sustain others if we are to sustain ourselves. And through the UNOS Social Business Centre at Sunway University, we realise the importance of social entrepreneurship and business in sustaining a viable ecosystem which aims to eradicate poverty and create more job makers than job seekers. And speaking of social enterprises, to eradicate poverty, our number one SDG is actually the Jeffrey Chia Foundation, which was launched as the first of its kind in Malaysia with, within the field of higher education with the aim of giving to society, quality education, and a provision in perpetuity. Education is seen as the ladder to get out of poverty and a path to a promising future. Even if not ultimate and immediate, education remains a key that can reduce poverty as it can change the future of the whole generation and of course the generations to come over time. Since 2014, the Sunway Group has been contributing towards hunger relief efforts and initiatives in a mission to touch as many lives as possible possible and this is the long-standing commitment to end hunger for the most impoverished in Malaysia and in line with SDG number two. To date the group has packed more than 500,000 meals and distributed to undernourished communities including urban poor families, refugees and earthquake victims. For SDG number three, good health and well-being, I wish to share some, share about some projects that we have. This first one is called Imagine Aging and it's a speculative design as applied research methodology on aging in the city that brings together a comparative literature expert working with a medical science professor involving a psychologist and my head of computer science collaborating with a design artist all the way in Lancaster University in the UK and his colleague who specializes in organizational health and well-being. Imagine six experts across different disciplines working just on one project throughout the world with impact on humanity. 
our research, our second research project is to improve lives for the elderly. And um, research entitled a distributed socio if, if sorry, wow, this is a very difficult title. A distributed socio affective cognitive gamification model. <laughs> that I did it. That is based on cognitive load and motivation theories for the enhancement of engagement among the elderly. What it does is it just focuses on maintaining personhood through social, cognitive and affective engagement with the older senior citizens with what is known as mild cognitive impairment and younger active senior citizens as well. Our students develop apps for the elderly to exercise and train their eye movement, problem solving skills and memory through games. And they call it the Move It app, which encourages exercise through dance, travel and cooking. We also uh, are developing assistive technology for the blind people and uh, assistive technology including screen reader, haptic devices, finger sliding haptic VR environment. What it involves is a website developed for the visually impaired to shop online using haptic devices and audio technology. But we know that's not enough, so in the pipeline for better customer service and more sales online, our researchers are working on older so that they can smell besides feeling through and touching uh, when they're shopping online. <laughs> Many other things we are doing for SDG3. Did you know that stunting is actually a threat in Malaysia? I didn't know that. Two out of ten children in Malaysia are actually stunted. And so our researcher, doc Dr. Derek Koch, uh, went to the World Bank on a, and was also a speaker at the Ministry of Health's Nutrition Division to present his report and basically to create awareness on this serious issue. Our collaboration with Cambridge University remains one closest to my heart, not because it's my alma mater, but because it means collaboration and it means, yeah, collaboration and leverage at the world's best so that our students at Sunway University will have the opportunity to be exposed to that world's best. Just, a, just two years ago, we signed an agreement, Sunway University, Sunway Medical Center with um, University of Cambridge and the Royal Petworth Hospital to establish the Clinical Research Center at Sunway. And this centre will develop an integrated approach to healthcare, clinical trials and research in Malaysia aimed at prevention, early diagnosis and improved treatments for a range of diseases suited to the Asian genetic competition. And the establishment of a joint programme between the University of Cambridge School of Clinical Medicine, Sunway Medical Centre and Sunway University will enable the sharing of academic excellence through regular academic visits and exchanges and offer scientific and clinical training opportunities at Sunway for outstanding postgraduates from Sunway. SDG number four, quality education um, and in in our education institutions, we empower our students with knowledge and help them build skills that they need in life and to solve problems. It is actually our further hope that they indulge in lifelong education and not just stop after formal education and to build our knowledge, to create new knowledge for humanity. While SDG number five specifically calls for gender equality, at Sunway, we celebrate and embrace diversity and stress on inclusion of not just gender differences, but social, religious and international. I met the water expert at Mercy yesterday. He's around here somewhere. And I said I wish to share how we at Sunway are also doing our bit for SDG number six 
on clean water and sanitation, we actually have our own Sunway South Key water treatment plant. And this is the very water treatment plant that has saved us from all the water shortages and all the water cuts so that our hospital can function, our shopping centres can have clean toilets, and those of us who study in this uh, university and college have water to cook food for our students, and of course those who live here have basically water to survive. We try to be self-sustainable and fueled by clean energy at Sunway University and Sunway College, with our solar panels installed to conserve and produce clean energy. At this stage, it's actually more supplementary to what TNB gives us, um, but it's a start. And you may also have seen our electric bus. You see, Dato, you did not have to contend with the traffic jam. You just have to get on the electric bus. And uh, so that's eco-friendly transportation system. SDG number eight sees our students out in the field developing others too with lifelong productive living skills. Sunway students are exposed to community-based issues and needs and to utilize the knowledge and skills acquired in the program to identify and propose solutions to the needs of the community. We recognize that it's not enough for our students to just study, study, study for their degrees. We wanted them to have a more entrepreneurial and enterprising outlook, so we developed the Sunway Innovation Labs, which is a collaborative space that is designed to help students grow their ventures at any stage of their development. It also offers co-working facilities to uh, work on their projects. And uh, <coughs> from the Sunway Innovation Labs, we now have a maker space and you would have seen it downstairs, do go and visit them, which aims to support and foster Sunway University's entrepreneurial ecosystem through self-initiated and collaborative learning to, that provides hands-on experience. And at the iLabs Makerspace, the university's community of different backgrounds are able to explore their interests, create ideas, and develop prototypes. So basically, this enables the university community to test functionality and the effects of their creation to end on end users. And of course, this in turn provides our students with market insights, which helps to plan their subsequent go-to-market strategies with a lot less failures. Hmm. I seem to have lost SDG number 10. Um, so this is on, let me have a look. Uh, this is on reduced inequalities and you can see how our students are very much involved uh, in this. We have many student volunteers in another slide which I will show you and uh, they are offering weekly tuitions to refugee children and uh, when our exchange students come we also involve them in teaching English, if they are from England especially. And uh, our students do like to visit old folks' home. I think it's very good for them to talk to older people and to appreciate what they are going through. So on to SDG number 11, which is Sunway City has embarked on a smart city initiative at the behest of our founder, Tan Sri Jeffrey Chia. And this initiative is consolidated under the main themes of sustainability in operations, sustainability in planning, sustainability for social community, governance and reporting, and a digital platform for data integration. And the plan is really to adopt a more to adopt more sustainable practices in energy generation and use, eliminate, eliminating plastic waste from ending up in landfills and drainage system, and converting food waste on campus into fertile compost for urban community farming. Reduce, recycle, and 
reuse has become like a battle cry for us on campus. Our students are leading campaigns to educate and promote and drive responsible consumption and reduction of wastes, re recycling and reusing all that we can. On July 17, 2018, we stopped single-use plastic. A challenge, no doubt, because we use so much disposable plastic bottles for our RO and mineral water. And Starbucks just isn't helping. <laughs> and we are managing to eradicate at least plastic straws. That battle we are slowly winning. With our last straw campaign, and at our recent stro last straw campaign, we added inclusivity in our campaign by encouraging our students to make new lifelong lasting friendships especially the ones from other parts of the world. So we said we would give out free metal straws, and they really queue up for it, to students who brought at least one friend. And in conjunction with this campaign, 7,000 students have come forward with a friend to receive a metal straw. So we've run out of straws now. We are bringing in more stock to give our students and to also encourage them uh, to use metal straws in, in replacement of the plastic straw. And we have to do something about Starbucks. <laughs> SDG number 12, um, our students on this responsible consumption and production, our students learn the importance of responsible disposable disposal of all things electronic. You know, like, they change handphones every year, right? Mm -hmm. And then their computers, they always say kaput, etc. <laughs> so they have to learn how to dispose of these uh, responsibly. So we have this huge e-waste disposal campaign. SDG number 13 on climate action sees our students involved in forest cleanups and tree planting initiatives. They love planting trees, everywhere planting trees. They told us that every new student is to plant a tree on the campus. I said I will not be able to see anybody after that. <laughs> so next is life below water is important to us too. I have our own researchers and students collaborating with experts employed at the Sunway Group, monitoring our lakes here at Sunway Lagoon and also in Sunway South Key. And here in this picture, you see uh, representatives from the Sunway Group and the US Embassy and Echo Knights, as they call themselves, releasing more than 1,500 fishes into the Emerald Lake. And this is in uh, Sunway Iskandar. And of course, you also see river cleaning, despite suffering from scratches and, and, and uh, dirty water. Our students are picking up rubbish and volunteers were able to clean the river at Bentong. We love our conservation scientists at Sunway. We have Associate Professor Dr. Shamala Ratna Yake and Dr. Jati Chu from Sunway University's Department of Biological Sciences who are working on the ecology and the population genetics conservation of the Malayan sun bears. Incidentally, we love sun bears and the sun bear is the Sunway mascot. And also, we are supporting our own associate professor, Dr. Gopalasamy Rubin, as he's known, a conservation scientist and he is the co-founder of RIMBA a Malaysian non-profit research group focused on conducting conservation science, all for the love of life on land, SDG number 15. In support of SDG number 16, peace, justice and strong institutions, our Sunway academic team developed an online community research program to expose and handle cyberbullying in Malaysia. Our team has conducted training with some 18 school counsellors and more than a thousand students from the Selangor Secondary Schools. This actually includes three international schools over a period of nine months and known as the Media Heroes Programme 
it has actually proven effective in improving participants' understanding of cyberbullying and identifying the cyberbullying phenomena happening in and outside the school. And lastly, equipping the participants with the tools to manage such bullies. Last but not least is SDG number 17, where we recognize the need to form formidable partnerships for the goals. Next, we need to join hands not just among ourselves, even though the Sunway Education Group is 30,000 people strong, but also with other organizations, groups, companies, celebrities, politicians, royalty, all in the photograph. You and me, and just about everyone else. We need to come together to collaborate and work on issues which have no discrimination in affecting all of us alike. Such as this wonderful partnership we have with Mercy Malaysia in providing the Mercy Malaysia Nepal Relief Scholarship one of my favorite projects. You deploy at Mercy emergency relief to Nepal during the devastating 2015 earthquake, which claimed 9,000 lives and destroyed 600,000 homes. You stayed with reconstruction programs to restore lives and livelihoods. I'm not sure if you are still there. But what could we do to support you? So we supplemented your noble and tremendous efforts with five important scholarships. The 2015 Nepal earthquake didn't just tremble the nation, but also hopes and dreams along with it. We had to combat the issue of displacement with replacement, and it was with courage and the hope of providing a platform for dreams that we gave an opportunity to five deserving students whom you helped us choose from Nepal to study any course of their interest at Sunway College and then progress on to Sunway University too. With only one condition, that these five scholars who are still with us, and you can see their faces up on the picture, that they go back to Nepal upon completion of their degree studies and to help build Nepal, not just for now, but for a better future. Thank you. So you see, we recognize that education is the crane which will lift the burden of wreckage and has the power to rebuild. So these students are not only gaining knowledge in the field of education, but they are also actively involved in volunteering clubs and societies. In fact, one of them is the president of the Sunway Volunteer Society, and that is a 2,200 strong club. And um, hopefully we will imbue them with qual leadership qualities as they work in a diverse culture and gain exposure to sustainable development <coughs> at both the college and the university. And for us, you and us, it is, a, it is an investment in hope and dreams for which a nation awaits. On that note, ladies and, thank, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you so much, Dr. Elizabeth Lee, the CEO of Sunway Education Group.